LGBTQI people have long been acknowledged back in the pre-colonial Philippines. But by lands or high priestesses led their communities in matters of spirituality, medicine, wisdom, and also took part in politics and economics. The role was often taken by women, but on some occasions, there were men who took on this role and lived their lives like women. However, Philippine societal structures and cultural norms were forcibly rearranged due to colonization, leading to the domination of Christianity, patriarchy, and machismo in our institutions. Eventually, the Babaylans were persecuted, and so was the acceptance of queer identities. According to the Attitude Survey on Sexual, Gender, and Sex Minorities, 20% of the population in the Philippines believe that people with different sexual orientations do not deserve their equal rights to be protected. Though the country has a higher acceptance rate than that of our ASEAN neighbors, the Philippines is still not a safe space for the LGBTQI community. One of the most publicized cases against the community would have to be that of our sister, Jennifer Laude, who was gruesomely murdered by a U.S. Marine soldier in October 2014 after he found out she was transgender. It was a gruesome crime that gripped the nation. Filipino transgender woman Jennifer Laude murdered by U.S. Marine Joseph Scott Pemberton. He was sentenced six to 12 years behind bars, and now he's been ordered released. And after six years of fighting for justice, the assailant was easily granted pardon, sending him back to the U.S. With this and more undocumented cases, equality and inclusion seem far away for the community. Though there is progress, much is needed to be done. In the current labor market of the Philippines, LGBTQI Filipinos now get highly recognized jobs, including top positions in media, in corporate industries, and more recently, in politics. However, companies and offices are still free to reject prospective candidates for a job solely on the basis of their Soji-esque. Many LGBTQI individuals in the Philippines are subject to persistent heteronormative and cis-sexist conditions. As they strive to do better economically in the hope of not being seen as liabilities by their families, they face adverse stereotypes and work discrimination. People say, a rainbow always appears after the rain. The sky lights up and the dark clouds fade away. And this bright, colorful view reminds us of what we're fighting for. Equality. Inclusion. Human rights. But for LGBTQI Filipinos, this rainbow is still out of sight. But what keeps it out of sight? What prevents them from reaching brighter days? In a focus group administered by Babaylanis Incorporated and Apcom, the participants were able to share instances of inclusion in workspaces, but also various experiences of discrimination and exclusion and other forms of challenges distinct to sexual and gender minorities. Bullying, harassment, unfair dismissal, refusal of promotion, Discriminatory practices and heteronormative standards can already be observed at the recruitment stage, thus lowering the chances for LGBTQI individuals of getting employed. According to a trans woman participant, she had a difficulty finding a job because of her gender identity. 
Right now, I am working as a tutor in a tutorial and review center. Prior to that, I had attempts at finding a job as a tutor as well, since it was more flexible and appropriate, given that I'm also taking classes. The difficulty is when dealing with parents. One of the concerns of the Human Resources Department is, we cannot accept you because it might cause issues with our clients. Fortunately, she eventually found a center that allows her to express herself in the best way she wants. She added that although there were clients and students who questioned her identity, as an educator, she took it as an opportunity to teach them about transgender experiences. Another participant from the lesbian and bisexual cisgender women group shared her experience. I don't disclose my sexual orientation because of fear that they wouldn't be okay with it, knowing that my boss is very religious. For most people, there really is a feeling of anxiety that when they find out that you are a member of the LGBT community, it might affect their employment. Gender stereotypes also adversely influence the decisions of which types of jobs to go for. Lesbian and bisexual women with masculine gender expressions enter jobs that fit their stereotype, such as security lady guards. Gay and bisexual cisgender men are seeking jobs such as hair and makeup artists, which fit their stereotype. Although these jobs are noble in their own way, this situation limits the set of opportunities a queer person can explore. But once these LGBTQI individuals get a job and start to have a glimpse of the rainbow and when it seems like all else is okay, the challenge of financial inclusion remains. Some LGBTQI individuals cannot list their partners of the same gender as beneficiaries given the practices of insurance companies, even if there is no mandate given by the law. Couples of the same sex at birth need to provide a proof of marriage, even if there's no marriage equality in the country. Transgender persons would also be accused of using fake IDs in bank transactions. These and countless more continue to push the community back to the dark. A rainbow's beauty is seen through the diversity of colors and how these perfectly blend together. In the Philippines, there is a very strong network of civil society organizations working on LGBTQI advocacy. This is why APCOM partners with one of the most established LGBTQI organizations for the Finance Inc. project. Hi, I'm Claire from Babaylanes and we are the country partner of APCOM for the Finance Inc. project funded by VOICE. Finance Inc. aims to improve the access of LGBTQI persons to social and economic services and to increase the space for participation of, L of the LGBTQI community. For our pilot project, we engaged the help of several LGBTQI advocates working in the private sector. Their inputs were very valuable in the development of our framework and our strategy for the SOGI as inclusion mojo. We are very grateful to Voice and to APCOM for involving us in the financing project. Without their initiative and their support, we would not have been able to develop our pilot project. In order to address the challenges that these LGBTQI individuals face with regards to financial inclusion, the Finance Inc. project crafted SOGI-esque inclusion modules and workshops that aim to raise awareness on the LGBTQI community. The organization hopes that through their pilot project, the LGBTQI individuals in the workforce will be accepted and treated fairly. Babaylanes and APCOM wanted to create a workshop module that's appropriate to the realities of the sector, and this was reflected in the process of module development. 
The module was crafted through consultative and collaborative efforts, and done through Zoom calls as a response to the ongoing pandemic. Five main activities were created. So the first activity is the consultation. We invited uh, LGBT Filipinos working in the private sector. We had a focus group deep discussion to discuss about the nuances in these fields, uh, what's the necessary framing for private companies to accept this engagement. We designed a workshop for employees and for uh, the management. It's essentially just a SOGS workshop discussing the concepts, but we framed it in a way that's related to uh, well-being and organizational development. So we also designed the module, we also designed the workshop uh, to initiate a discussion among the employees and the, uh, the management uh, for them to uh, review their current policies and identify ways to make inclusive changes in their company. Uh, so after we developed the module, we went back to those who reached out for the consultation, for the validation workshop. So it was just a way to identify gaps in what we've developed and uh, improve on what's been working for them. Uh, after that, uh, we also held a pilot workshop. We call it pilot workshop, but it's basically a test run. And it's just a way to see how this module would translate on the ground. Uh, and then after that, uh, to end this entire project, uh, we planned on having a module orientation. It's just a way for us to disseminate uh, the module uh, our learnings to the broader community, to the different stakeholders, to the LGBT community, for, to the private sector, uh, other organizations, as a way for everyone to uh, replicate, for example, the module which we created and at the same time for them to know their role in this roadmap that we develop. The module was piloted in a workshop with a multinational BPO company represented by their diversity group. With a total of 20 attendees during the session, this project proved to be beneficial to the private sector in understanding the roadblocks that the LGBTQI individuals face in their journey towards financial inclusion. A total of 19 participants from nine organizations were also present during the module orientation for the workshop facilitators. Babaylanes and AFCOM believe that these civil society organizations would be of help through applying their learnings during the orientation in deploying the SOGI-esque modules and continuously building a stronger relation with the private sector. We envision that through this project, LGBTQ organizations will be able to engage private companies and that they be able to um, build stronger relationships with these companies' pride and diversity groups. Imagine a number of CSOs working to inform private companies about the concepts of SOGI-esque diversity and inclusion. It would be easier for us to forward policies that will further protect and advance the rights of LGBTQI individuals in the private sector. The workshop uh, gave me very, very important lessons about SOGI-esque, about knowing my audience. And so I will very much apply that um, the next time I'm invited to speak been suffering for so long, we've been enduring so much um, without like, even the barest minimum of a national anti-discrimination law to protect us. But please know that even if we're individually struggling, we're not alone. That we have a community ready to embrace you, to empower you, to accept you, and to fight with you for your human rights and equality. Yun nga, sinabi ko is yung grassroots. Kasi kaya marami hindi nakaka-intindi ng SOGS. Kasi parang scholarly lagi yung dating. Nakaka-intimidate. Hindi siya nakaka-ano dun sa level ng edukasyon, ng grassroots talaga, of the community na hindi natin naaabot. Which is maganda na gumagaan na napapasimple natin yung SOGS. I guess itong ating pro program and project 
nag-i-improve na yung understanding ng Soji S para sa lahat. We know that this is just the start in helping LGBTQI Filipinos with financial inclusion. Through the Soji S modules, we hope that it would make companies more inclusive and help in giving context and solutions to gender-based discrimination in the workplace. The Finance Inc. project of Babaylanes and APCOM would also like to call on Implementations of inclusive programs for the LGBTQI individuals. The government, along with support groups and LGBTQI advocacy committees, should work hand-in-hand in in creating effective, anonymous, and accessible mechanisms to report gender-based discrimination and violence. And businesses and LGBTQI groups should partner in advocating inclusive workplace and business environments in the country. Awareness and training on Soji-esque and the stigmas that surround the community. The private sector, like financial institutions and LGUs, should receive Soji-esque awareness training on how to deal and interact with members of the LGBTQI community. They say, a rainbow always appears after the rain. The sky lights up and the dark clouds fade away. When the stormy weather persists, do we stop hoping to experience the light? For the LGBTQI Filipinos, we continue fighting for equality, inclusion, human rights. As one community, we'll brave the storms together to witness and experience the rainbow that lies ahead.